matter who you are, where you are, what your choices have been, and what karmic timelines and contracts you have journeyed, the light is calling for the reunification of all aspects of life in this realm now. It is calling for the cleansing of all polarities. It is calling for the rising of all sacred heart centers now. All are being summoned home to the greater light now. and welcome to Whole Soul Mastery's Live Well, Live Whole podcast series. I'm Marie Moeller and I'm an author, intuitive, and a messenger of vibrational awareness, vetting, and rising in our lives today. And I'm here today with Matthew Crowfoot, who is joining me again for a third podcast together. We've delved into discernment. We've talked about preparation and we've broken down a lot of those things in some other podcasts that are in the archives people can tune into that but we're here talking about surfing the waves of change i think many people are feeling the impulse to change or of change or at the very least there is a requirement of change and i think there's this energy of we can meet that and we can make the choice to join it and surf those waves in a kind of embracing the adventure of it, or we can resist it, right? We can make other choices about it. So given that July is right around the corner when we're recording this podcast, I just am feeling this energy in July of Independence Day, sovereignty, this call to greater expansion, and that also expansion often requires change, right? It requires some shifts on all kinds of levels in our lives, whether those are physical shifts like moving or changing jobs or things changing in people's relationships. So I think change is an escort right now in our lives. It can be a mentor if we wanna view it that way. So I think we have a lot we could talk about today, Matthew, and I just wanna thank you for joining me and let's delve into some of this, kind of what's in your heart, what are some of your experiences with these energies flowing through right now yeah and and i feel the energy already flowing this this is wonderful yeah change is in the air and uh all across the world people are being invited to change uh like you said not uh, some people are resisting it but so many are answering the call like they're changing who they hang out with who their friends are they're changing where they live uh some people are just uprooting and moving to whole new places and just you know like there's a coalescing of i guess people with similar vibrations it's like a lot of people are becoming aware that hey where i'm at right now or where what i thought was a good vibrational fit no longer is and so Mm -hmm. if we listen to that call we're being guided to these new places right so uh, on my you know personally i just moved from los angeles right in the middle of some pretty intense energy and, uh, you know, views of the world. And I was called to move up to Idaho, which is like, what? (laughs) Like, seems very off brand for me. I'm a big city guy. And uh, so I moved to Boise, Idaho, and I am loving it here. It's just a perfect vibrational match for me. Um, Mm -hmm. I love how friendly everyone is here and how easy uh, the living is up here. And, um, you know, you're, like people are just courteous and kind, like they let you in in traffic. They like, um, you know, you'll be walking down the street and someone will look at you and say, hi, just for no reason. Just hi. Hey, how's it going? Like, not like one person, like everyone, everyone, everyone. And so what it does is it creates this culture. And then when you move here, you're like, oh, well, I want to fit into this culture. Right. So Mm-hmm. Again, it's that vibrational match. So if you're in a, a place in the world where it doesn't have culture like that, it's an invitation, like to, like you said, to change. How can we change where we are? Not everyone has to move, uh, but we can set the intention to say, what do I, what would I like my world to be like? And when you hold that vibration, then you invite people around you to change and meet you, right? So there's right. two ways to go about it, move or change where you're at. So, wait, right. Wait. 
Exactly. Yeah. And you can flow with change or you can somehow avoid or resist it in some way. I think we have uh, different ways we can play with it. And I love what you just described. I love that kind of culture of connection that you're experiencing versus potentially the culture of disconnection where you were before or just in our global world. I think the changes we've seen in the last couple of years, if people look deeper, if you just look like a one degree deeper into the last couple of years, while it looks like people might be more separated in some ways than ever, I actually, it depends on your lenses and your perception. I'm seeing people more called to connection with themselves and then with other people and with the places they live live in and uh, and and even their homes. And if they're not feeling that connection, there's an invitation to change, right? It's like, I think we're, we're noticing things more, whether it's happening still at a subconscious level in people or whether we really are more consciously noticing these things and then we're taking action, right? I mean, you must've felt an impulse and instead of ignoring that and moving past it or pushing past it, you, you listen to it, right? And listen to where it was gonna take you, which was kind of an unexpected discovery, wouldn't you say? Oh yeah, definitely. Um... I figured I'd do my due diligence and come up here and check it out first. And so I did that and I was very pleasantly surprised. And uh, and, and looking in hindsight now too, I, I see like, there's like this bulldozer pushing people towards change. So you have the easy way, follow the, the flow when it invites you ahead of the pain, so to speak, <laughs> or you can wait until the world like tries to- Pushes you. you right like what its agenda is or what it wants for you or um you know the way the you know like the group is going per se you can you can choose to go off on your own and do your own thing or listen to a different path and it's it's been so much more gentle and smooth to be listening and to be willing to move when uh when asked to move you know instead of waiting you know so and you know, even now I noticed that if I would have waited, it would have been a lot harder. So right. And so, you know, you work with clients, you do healing work. And what do you think? I don't know, are the aspects or qualities in people or tools that they might have? We know that obviously our personalities and our lenses of perception have a lot to do with the choices we make in our lives, but I wonder if there's anything you can comment just from your experience with people, how, how we can move into meeting change with a sense of adventure, right? Yeah, and we can, we can also talk about the blocks to change, the blocks to that movement, right? But what, what would you say, even inside yourself, what helps you? Are you somebody who naturally embraces change? Is that very easy for you or has that not been the case? It's not been easy for me, and and that's been the hardest part about the move is um, doing things slightly different or in a new way or with new, you know, a new sink, you know, in the kitchen or just things like that. It seems so simple, uh, but it's like it kind of disrupts your routine quite a bit. So I think uh, when you're saying that, the first thing that popped into my mind is safety. So if we can create a deep sense of safety we can bring that with us and then that allows us to change. If we feel like we're not in a state of safety, you know, that's one of the things I work with my clients is doing a lot of deep subconscious and energetic work to clear traumas, clear negative beliefs and stuff so that we can have an embodied sense of safety in our own body and our environments and our lives, and our relationships. And then when you have that, you will be uh, more likely to be adventurous and you know, maybe tiptoe at first, but eventually you start saying, hey, I can, I can handle a little change. I can handle a little bit of difference in my life. And especially when you see things get better, then it's like, it pays off. Um, the other thing is perspective came to mind too. And that's what you're talking about with, how can you see this not as a bad thing, but as an adventure, like you said, mm -hmm. or um, kind of take the higher view of these changes. What will this mean for me? Um, and all of it builds a huge amount of like self-esteem and confidence as well. Like yeah. when you commit to making small changes and you do them and then you start 
like feeling good about yourself. Like, hey, I was able to make that little change. Uh, we were just talking about how I just cut back on my coffee. Mm. So it's a small little change, but my real goal is to lose some weight. So I'm using coffee, getting off coffee as like a stabilizing force and as a baby steps to build momentum, confidence, discipline for the bigger change of losing weight, um, which will probably involve, you know, eating less carbohydrates, I think is, is the key for me. Right. Uh, yeah. And it's not like I eat horrible, but you know, I eat a lot of rice and potatoes and things like that. And my body just likes to store that. So, <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, but then I'll, I'll be like, Oh, you know, I've done this with a coffee and that's a little harder to do. And then I'm like, okay, I'm ready to I'll do it with the other one. So. Yeah, it, it is interesting. I like what you talk about. I mean, I think Joe Dispenza talks about breaking the habit of being yourself. And I think we do get in these well-worn pathways. Um, they're very comfortable and that's what we sense as safety. And I think the cosmos is actually, there's a deeper divine impulse that's shaking things up, right? A lot of people, our language in the light worker community would be the light codes are pouring in and this is a time of the shift of the ages. And so it is kind of like the earth is going through a shaking. But if we can embrace a little bit of the rattling, if we can rattle ourselves a little bit and, and uh, you know, just like you did where you're giving up the habit of drinking coffee, it's a way of, if you can choose the change you want to see, right? If you can choose the change you want to be, it's a lot easier for it to feel like a safe change because you chose it versus being thrown into it, right? I think that's what you're talking about. Um, and, and the baby steps of that. So we can create a sense of security. I've been doing the same thing. I have a studio space and I still have more work to do, but to clean it out. And there's something by, instead of waiting for something that like I'm missing a document or something that needs to be filed that's in a pile that hasn't been filed, instead of waiting for something to be an impetus where I have to clean things up because I have to find that thing, Instead, I'm choosing to clean up the space because it just feels better when it's clearer. And I have a friend, I don't know that much about feng shui, but I know people who do. And I have a good friend who knows a lot about feng shui. She trained with Denise Lin, who is an expert in, or a master of feng shui. And I, I'm finding more appreciation of so many people's different skills, the diversity of skill sets that we all have too. And when I listen to her, I know that she's been in this process of feeling change and it started manifesting in her home in a way. And, and being tuned into feng shui, the way I perceive it, because I just see it from the outside, but they know like moving a book on a bookshelf, right? Or putting something in a certain corner in your house. I think there's something called the bagua. I know that there's something, it's like a map of your house, but it, it reflects the map of you. And so by moving things in the map of your home, you're actually moving the energy in yourself. And that's another way people who understand this feng shui language or wanna tap into that, you can create changes in your home environment that will create movement in your life experiences. And literally by doing the things she was doing when she knew she was felt, feeling this impulse to change, not really knowing what that meant, she is literally moving like you. And I never would have seen that coming, ever. So it's like these little changes that create big change. They add up to bigger change. And we might discredit those things that are these smaller changes, but that's where we find our empowerment because we chose these little approximated changes. And then we feel more confident inside ourselves. We're more empowered to see it as an adventure. And once you have a couple of small successes with yourself of like, I'm just not gonna have coffee today, or I'm gonna have two cups instead of three cups or one cup instead of two cups. It's your chosen change, right? Yeah. And I think that's a lot of the, if, if I would say some people would be listening to this and saying, I'm not feeling as an adventure. I don't find it very fun. Uh, they wouldn't be in, they wouldn't be smiling as they were talking about the changes they were experiencing. They might even have some tears or some sadness or some emotion come to the surface um, 
about the change and it's it's kind of when you're pushed into change or unexpected changes and i think many people would categorize the last couple of years it was unexpected changes for a lot of us and yet there's an to me there's an overarching umbrella i do think we're being summoned by a higher consciousness now to change and i think we're all being nudged in our own ways and then we respond to that in our own ways but I, I like that phrase. It's a whole book that Joe Dispenza wrote about breaking the habit of being yourself. I think he, get, he does a number of workshops still on those things. And um, it's a big concept, right? Breaking the habit of being yourself because we are in our well-worn pathways and we have like those well-oiled gears. And sometimes we just like to stay there. We don't want to try th new things. Not everybody looks at new, newness as an adventure. No, that, that's for sure. Wow, you touched on so many amazing things there. One that really sticks out is this idea of like your environment and making these changes in your house. And I actually, uh, I think, I, I guess I should say finally, I think I just watched this uh, Jordan Peterson video on cleaning your room or something like that. And it's all about, you start with your personal space, your bedroom, let's say, and you start improving it and you start making it so it's good for its function like so you can have a good night's sleep and then you want to beautify it and you mm. just keep working on this and as you work on it like you said it's like you it's a reflection a map of you right. and then you start to spread out to your house let's say and then you know on and on and on and if every person would take you know we talked about responsibility before the call take responsibility for cleaning their own room metaphorically and, and literally in some cases right uh, adjusting things, start listening to the subtle energies of this feels better to me, or I feel better, you know, when I do this. Um, we all set the example, like Gandhi said, we're the change we want to see, right? If we all, if every person did this, it's like, that's done. The world is the way we need it to be then at that point. Um, so, so that's a huge, a huge step that we can all do and make baby baby changes you know little mini changes and let them build on each other um yeah yeah they the feel other top yeah. go ahead go ahead go ahead please i was trying to think of the the other topic that you kind of touched on so i mean you had the one of joe dispenza um yeah and, but there was one other topic though I'm trying to blank here. no but i think woven in there also was the you know choosing it versus being pushed into it somehow oh, I don't know right. that... yeah yeah that was the other topic so one thing that comes to mind there is that we're in a world that literally is being flipped from upside down to right side up so if you feel like your world has been turned upside down that's actually a good thing because now it's right side up and it's not it's not easy to have that happen to you some people it shows up as a dark night of the soul but if you listen to the call and, and, and move and move and move, you will eventually stay ahead of a lot of the pain like we we're talking about. It doesn't mean it's not going to be highly disruptive, but if you wait, eventually everything's just going to get uh, dumped on its head. Um, so the invitation there is, like you said, Marie, it's like it can be really hard. You might not want to do it. But instead of like focusing on comfort and keeping things the same and trying desperately to hold on to this old world, it's, it's gone. Like we are moving to something new and the birthing pains of that new thing are going to be, you know, as hard as you make it. So if you can change your attitude all the way to like, things are going to be very volatile during the next period and just expect that. And yes. then say, how can I, how can I still like be the calm in the storm for myself and those around me? Like choose this, say like, I know it's going to be hard. I know it's going to be volatile. I'm so like inspired by many people that are truly embodying higher consciousness right now. Like mm -hmm. everyone outside in the world is like, you know, yelling and screaming and crying and like anxious and like all this stuff. And I see some people are like happy and like, they're like, yeah, we got this. Don't worry about it. Like they're really holding that vibration. Right. And I don't think it's like naiveness either. I think it's truly like, wow, I've done the work. Mm. I know where this is going and I can hold this for other people, you know? And I think a lot of people that are here right now, that's why we're here. You know, it's, that's what we've been called to do. Right. So yes. 
and you're one of those people. So thank you. <laughs> mm, that's so, so, well, you know, I feel that and I love it. It's so enjoyable to be with other people. We don't have to be balanced or at peace or, you know, sailing smoothly through the storms um, to find this kind of connection, but just a willingness, a willingness to be a force for good, a willingness to be a vessel to a greater grounding while the storms blow through. There is something that is so enjoyable about that. It's why we enjoy each other's company, right? It's why we really vibrationally matched each other um, to connect in the way that we did. And I think we're finding that in our lives. And I want to go back to something you said earlier, which is, is uh, you know, it's been an inverted world and it is turning right side up. So it feels like everything's topsy turvy. But in fact, we've been living, it's like if the world was literally held upside down, it's like, you know, we're hanging from the earth. And then when it's turning right side up, we're like, wait, wait, this is all wrong. But in fact, it's going to be so much better. And I feel like I've actually been talking to myself about this, that um, I've noticed when I, when I am in a, an experience, because we all have it where a lower vibration kind of comes into our our life, our, our day, right? I am, I, I am now saying things like, oh, that's an energy of my upside down life. I'm starting to give it a language of like, oh, that's my upside down life. And because to give it language like that, it helps me realize that that doesn't have to be the life I'm choosing. That's the life that's the well-worn pathway, right? That's the life that if I do nothing, that is the interaction or the dynamic or the experience I will have because that is kind of the vibrational template. But what's lovely is when you can start to see things, if they are unpleasant, say it, say two spouses are arguing or say you had a difficult day at work or just the stress of the grind of kind of the... Uh, prison planet or the enslavement programs, the debt enslavement that a lot of people are trapped in, right? You got to get up, you got to make the coffee, you got to get in the car, you got to do the commute, you got to go work the hard to eight or nine hours, you got to come home, fix dinner, feed the kids, you know, the whole thing. If we can just say, oh, what if that's part of my upside down life? And then it begs the question, what would my right side up life look like? What does it feel like? If this is my upside down life, then what does my right side up life have in store for me? What is it calling me to? And if we would peer into that and we'd look at that and we'd expand our vision about it, we'd say, wow, what if I didn't work 40 to 50 hours a week, right? What if I work 20 hours a week? Or what if I only work 10? What if I didn't work? <laughs> I mean, what if I did something else that whatever it was for my income streams was taken care of in some way, but not in the way that I'm thinking right now. And that just opens the door to newness, for newness to begin to find you. And I'm finding things easier, even like how you and I connected and a number of people who join us in the roundtables that we do. I've been so amidst some change in my life the last several months, there have been less roundtables, but I don't think I'm the only one. I think a lot of people have been going through change. I don't even know if we could have all synced up for a roundtable. We're kind of due for that, but it is an illustration of an upside down world turning right side up and you moving from LA to Idaho, where you are, that was part of your listening of like something that was once aligned, you can now recognize you had to be open to seeing something doesn't feel as fulfilling. I don't know if that was your language, if it was just something isn't fulfilling. I'm just not feeling it here the way I was before. There was obviously a time before, because I don't think you were born in LA, you moved there. There was a time where moving there was the alignment. I was yeah, called huh? to move there for sure. Wow. And then I was told, you got to be here. And I'm like, I don't want to be here. <laughs> and it's like, no, you got to be here. And then, then it's like, okay, here's where you can move. But it's not like you have to move here, but you could move here. But you're not re ready. You're not supposed to move now. It's like, okay, that's annoying. And then finally, it's like, okay, now's the time to move. <laughs> it's like, okay, <laughs> let's do it. And it's so weird to have it kind of come through like that. It wasn't just like, oh, here's an idea. And even in my own conscious brain, like I was looking at other places that I consciously thought would be where I wanted to move. And it turns out those aren't the right places for me to move. And you had time, you gave yourself the time yeah. to sort of 
I would say vibrationally vet that to look into that and play it out. Okay, the places you feel attracted to going, which was not where you ended up. Because it was you interesting. Were upside down world places. Right. So that's why this is the right side up world place for me for the next you know right. part of the journey. Um, also, one thing that's been happening to me a lot is. I get forward guidance of what's coming up, but like well in advance so that there's never any stress or screwing around. But at first I thought like, oh, this is an urgent thing. It's like, no, this is like, if you do this in a calm and collected way, you will be so far ahead of everyone else that you, it's not a problem, you know, just chill out. And mm -hmm. so now I've been like trying to do it a lot more gracefully uh, and I'm nice. really grateful that I've been getting this intuitive guidance you know, like in such a gentle, slow way, you know, it's like right. an invitation, not a push. <laughs> well, and I think we also can reflect on this because I think we shared in another podcast, at least a little bit, some health challenges in your life. I think we're very purposeful. We start to see again in the rights, the writing of our lives, the right side up lenses of perception. We can see that a lot of what many of us have gone through before now was preparation. So I think a lot of your healing challenges was part of growing that patience. It was part of growing that listening. It was part of honoring yourself in a way that maybe you weren't before those things happened. And you do start to see that everything has meaning, right? All the experiences we've had, even if they were hard or, or you know challenging in some way, like it made this last experience you had that much easier that you could fall back into a kind of grace and listen and take more graceful, peaceful action instead of, I don't know, stress or, you know, we can get guidance, but then our ego will say, hey, let me help you with that. <laughs> And the ego will push you into something that, like you're saying, it's like those, it could have pushed you into upside down places if you had let your ego kind of wrangle that and take over. But I think you were practiced enough to say, even though Idaho is not my <laughs> the first thing I would have on my list, it seems to be on spirits list and I'm going to check it out, right? Sure. Yeah. 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 When you said <laughs> your ego offers to help, I'm like, no, thank you. <laughs> don't need that uh, right. uh that's been one of the interesting side effects of of being on a spiritual journey too is is far less ego um just like yeah just like doing things because they're the right thing to do or in service and just not really worrying too much about the rest so yeah just kind of letting that go I think it's big what you also just said I felt the energy of time because time is part of what corkscrews us down into the 3D planet into the the consciousness of separation um that's one of the things that I felt for a long time in my life if I have any kind of resistance to the old paradigms it's the trap of time I mean we think about well time organizes our world in many ways I've even resisted like daylight savings time it has never made sense to me and i you know who really tells me about that my animals talk about for six months out of the year they feel like they're in an upside down world where dinner is always late okay. right and so i watched that and and time can be stressful and you didn't put a timetable you didn't allow the ego to insert all those false energies of the 3d matrix even though, you know, you get those guidances and you're like ready to act, but then you also got the guidance, like not yet, you know, this is, this, this is coming in early. So you had time to know about what was coming, which also grows patience. Like from a spiritual lens, if people were willing to step into more spiritual vision, if you already have spiritual vision, I can hear spirit saying there's always room for deepening that vision, right? You can always expand your vision. So I just notice where the upside down world, you could call that the ego, but my upside down life, which was the life I was just living in recent years that where there's the 3D matrix is woven throughout it. And I've been on a spiritual journey for some time now. But I, I, I don't think it's uncommon that people who are on the spiritual path 
have doses in their days or in their lives where they feel great. They feel fabulous. They are living in the flow. And then something will just come in and, you know, sort of flatten them out or overwhelm them or trigger them into saying things that they didn't mean or making choices that they otherwise wouldn't have made because the stress was just so perfect and precise. And I can, I feel like the serpent and, you know, that comes through the transmissions a lot. That's the upside down world. And that's where the serpent thrives. And that's where there's so many illusions and false mirrors that keep trying to reflect to me the serpent's version of who I am. And that happens to a lot of people on this planet. I think that's one of the conditions of being in a 3D matrix is you, you at first ingest and accept all those false mirrors of us, right? And that can, mirrors, I could mean in the relationships we have, right? In the jobs we have, all the mirrors around us. And then when you go on the spiritual path, you do start to question those reflections of what's we have those in our lives for a reason because that's information for us. Sometimes people blame those mirrors and say, you, <laughs> it's your fault. I feel this way. But the truth is those mirrors are just showing us those places inside us that are living in that upside down world and we're frustrated about it. We know we have the skills, but until we're willing to see a little deeper and a little differently and a little more openly, can we start to glean the gifts in what that is for us? So for you, it just that's just one example about the move, the nudging that you had moved there before, but then there was this awareness that was coming that there's a new place, there's a new space, there's a new path being made for you, and you could become available to it. And even if some 3D old habits showed up, we can notice those and say, oh, I know you, right? Yeah. I know you, you're an old friend from the ups, my upside down life, right? Just like I just want to make this point, like if people have an alcohol issue and they keep meeting their buddy at the bar as a metaphor, eventually you might have to say, maybe I don't meet Fred at the bar tonight, right? That's just one small change that you don't have to go down the slippery slope of those old choices. But we have those companions in our journey that are us. It's our own patterns that we have to make a choice to say, I don't think I'm going to hang out with doubt tonight, right? Mm -hmm. You know? These are choices and these are lenses. And when you first start, like you said, it's these small steps, these small changes, but just having a conversation with those things like, oh, thanks for the invitation, low self-esteem or whatever it might be, right? It's another companion or fear or whatever it might be or judgment. I mean, there's plenty, right? I mean, the 3D matrix is abundant in those kinds of things. But when we start to realize wow, those are just all the messengers of my upside down life. And it's given me, it helps even more neutralize any ties I have with the, that kind of 3D world that could still come into my life at any moment, right? I have the circuitry for that. But if I name it and I say, oh, I know you, you know, thanks for the invite to have dinner together. But actually, I'm, I'm, I have other plans. And then I make a choice to step into what, how am I feeling and thinking and breathing and enjoying something in my right side up life? You know, so I'm in my house, nothing's changed except for my vibrational timeline that I'm living in, in that experience. I can either join with fear and have all those experiences and conversations over dinner, or I can join my higher, you know, 5D or higher consciousness self. And I can choose to think about the things that I'm creating you're in a new place. And I think I've even heard, you know, we've, we've communicated a bit where you were going to go out and check out some restaurants or you're going to go out and just explore your new area. You were choosing that instead of moving and hanging out with your old lower 3d counter, like aspects of yourself. I mean, that's, that is kind of a sign of these times. If people can take these lessons from your own life experience of what, who are you hanging out with? It's a good question. Who are you hanging out with, right? Yeah, yeah, those are some great points. Um, I did have some of the old old uh, patterns show up, like you said. So I had a lot of patience on the long timeline, but then we talked about this on the shorter timeline, you know, when two, three, four weeks are going by, when you expect something to be done in a week, like finding out if you're approved for an apartment, that's a big deal, like four weeks. Right. And having to keep calling back. So I wanted to control the process. Mm. 
And whenever I'm trying to control the process now, I notice it. And, and that's kind of the key with what you're saying is that awareness of these things allows you to say, hey, no, thank you. I don't, I don't want to get engaged and involved with right? you right now. I got, I got a date with joy or bliss or right. uh, later on tonight. So let's, I'm just going to go do that. That sounds more fun. Right. Um, or, or create it, you know, go out and, and, and create it. So yeah, so, you know, I guess, yeah, really awareness, like the more you can be present and um, notice your patterns, notice these, these things happening, then you can break that pattern, interrupt them and choose differently, right? And it does just by making a different choice. We're, we're coming into a time and more of a consciousness. More people are gonna be feeling this over time is that everything is energy. And so by just being aware of the invitation to the dinner with your ego or a person that matches that ego somehow, or the invitation to sovereignty or the invitation to have dinner with yourself or another person that is talking about creating and where you're moving into instead of looking in the past and not even so much the future, but that present moment where, how are you channeling your creativity and your creative life force in that moment? That's where I feel like the sweet spot is, right? And when you're in a process of personal and collective change, like we are, there is something beautiful. And you, we started out talking about safety. I always love going back to the safety and the familiarity of the vibration of creativity because cre creativity is where our creative power is. And so I, I often like to fall back into, if I have a default pattern, instead of falling into fear, because a lot of people do, and not to say that I can't either, the invitation's always there, but over the past 20 years at least, I really acknowledge this impulse to creativity. And so if I'm triggered into something where change is being required or something's shaking up in my experience that doesn't feel very comfortable or if it makes me feel less safe, I have trained myself to have a new default system that isn't fear, that I actually default into creativity. So I know if I'm going to be triggered, I actually have a really beautiful place to go, right? And that's another thing that you were talking about, line up those habits that are small steps so here's an example with your coffee. If when you were get when you're giving that up, do you have that impulse? Do you have something else? Like if you feel the call to go get the coffee, do you go for a walk or do you replace that? It's nice to have kind of like a replacement vibration in some way or something else that you're choosing instead of just leaving the vacuum of the thing you think you're living without or you're fighting against indulging, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's a, a good practical tip. Uh, I'm not using that right now. I just felt like like uh, this resistance to stopping coffee. Mm -hmm. And then one day I felt like I was on a conveyor belt bringing me towards my destination of being coffee free. And like, I'd really have to work hard to get off this conveyor belt. It's just effortlessly delivering me and everything is just naturally aligning with that. So uh, nice. not everyone can count on having that. <laughs> Uh, and I don't we get celebrate it. I, I, I noticed it, celebrated it, and I'm enjoying right. it. I'm finding it so easy, whereas before when I was trying to control it. So I was kind of, I guess I was waiting for the right time, and then it just is happening naturally because I know a deep, deep downside, I have the intention this is something I want to do. Yeah. So now it's manifesting for me. Um, most people have to be a little more 3D about it, I think. So, yeah. So having all like an, replace it with something else. Um, my, my 3D backup plan is to, I got a, like a, I don't know what you want to call it, like a French press. Oh. And I bought regular beans, regular caffeinated beans and decaffeinated beans. And so my plan is like, put like four, like five teaspoons of caffeinated and one teaspoon of decaf, mm. and then start going like a half, half more of decaf and a half less of- nice of caffeinated and then over like two weeks just you're drinking the same amount of coffee but eventually it's all decaf and your brain doesn't like it's like wait what happened oh, right <laughs> there's no need for panic right <laughs> you, you pulled a fast one on me and, <laughs> and you still think you're drinking coffee each day so there's a lot of um, cues and then you can just wean off that so uh, i haven't needed That's to do that i started to do that a little bit but 
I'm, I'm fortunate enough to um, be in a good place right now with that. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see where that goes. That's nice. I mean, I think there. I'm going to take that one to heart because when it can be easy like that, and you can exchange one out for the other, while some of the behaviors stay the same, for some things that can really work beautifully, right? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's either jumping in the cold pool or or going in really slowly. So like Atomic Habits style micro changes to your life. Yeah. Um, I used to do this with the gym. I said, okay, I have to go to the gym and touch the door. I don't have to go in, I don't have to do anything else. Right. I touch the door. Snowing right. out, get up at seven. I don't want to go, but I just have to touch that door. No big deal. So you go, you touch the door. You're like, well, crap, I'm here already. I might as well just, maybe I'll, maybe I'll step inside. And then you see everyone else doing all this stuff. You're like, well, I, I guess I could do like two or three somethings. And then next thing you know, you're doing it. You know? Right, but that... You know what? You just did a beautiful job of breaking down change in a very accessible way, because I don't know that I've ever thought about it that way, but I love how you're talking about it, even with the coffee or the gym and the door. You know, it's just these small approximations of real change, right? That the ego doesn't freak out. But if the first day for some people, if you just like, that's it, I'm joining the gym and you like bolt in there and you're like, take on all the machines, right? Your, your ego is going to be like, never do that again. But yep. you don't do that. You know how the I, ego thinks. I you know, you see, buy it. Right? Exactly. It's like, oh, nothing to see here. He's only touching the door. We're not going in. We're fine. We're fine. We're fine. Right? And I think that's brilliant. It is, it's just sometimes if we have a lot of alarm bells, security systems around our ego that's already set to alert us to any small change, Sometimes you have to do that. You don't want to come barreling in or you're going to get a whole lot of resistance, not necessarily to ever, from everybody else around you, but from yourself. Yeah. And, you know, we're the only ones that can really make the change that we want. And, and here we are. I think this is a good segue. Just I wanted to plant some seeds because we're about to move into July 2022. We're in a year of, it seems like, I want to say, it's it not going to make sense, but it came to me like unsh the sh unshakable shakings, like the guaranteed energy that I think we're going to have in 2022 is to be shaken, is to everything kind of rattle to the surface that doesn't belong in our right side up life. So that's what you were saying earlier. Like if we can expect that change is the new order of the day, if, if we knew if we lived in a part of the world, I don't, but if we lived in a part of the world that, you know, it's like the two month rainy season and then you get there and you're like, ah, oh, it's raining, but you knew, you know, it's the rainy season. So then you prepare for rain, right? If you prepare and you know, this is a stormy season right now, there's still a lot of change still yet to unfold. And things that are going to create new characteristics, new cultures of consciousness in our world, much like how you move from one place to another and are experiencing that, we're going to experience that even if people don't move. Even if they don't leave their apartment, their house where they live for some time, change is coming to your shores. And when we can say, oh, cool, 2022 is the year of change. Awesome. Right? I know for some people that's a little harder uh, than for others, but just like you said, touch the door. So touch the energy of change. So let yourself admit to yourself, this is a year of change. We can know that we can say it out loud to ourselves. We can expect change. Then change isn't unexpected, right? If you're saying we've already had too much change, let's get back to normal. Then you're setting yourself up to be counter intuitive and, uh, going against the grain of change that two, 2022 is riddled with this is the template for this year is change of epic proportions yeah so if, if you yeah. listen and you like gradually stay ahead of that change it's it's like we said earlier it can be pleasant even um but if you wait it's going to be really tough and right. uh at that point then you jump in the cold pool and you're forced to go in and do the full workout and that can be motivating in its own way like okay now we really have to do this like we really have to go all in uh, some people respond well to that kind of level of crisis it's, it's a stress response yeah i'd rather come from a place of deep resilience and self-regulation and just being like 
have like a core strength to mm. confront that. And I'm not there either. I mean, I, I have some physical work I want to do to be prepared for that. You know, uh, I feel like I'm mentally, emotionally, and spiritually prepared for it. Right. I've been doing most of my work in those areas, but now it's like, well, what if I have to skip a meal? That's mm. probably going to make me feel not so good. Or what if I can't have any coffee a couple of days of not feeling so good, right? So I want to get to a point where I can do any of those things and, and I'm still strong and stable, right? You know. Right. Definitely let go of any addictions too. Now is the time. Let go of any addictions you think you might have to right. anything. Um, you know, if it's if, coffee, alcohol, TV, whatever. Yeah, you know. it's true. I mean, there's vices and addictions and um, attachments that we have to those things. I think also part. I, people may not like that I'm using the word shaking. Kids go through this all the time in their educational experiences because they're always moving on to another grade, another school, and a new experience that's kind of expected at that time in their life. So maybe younger people, just by the nature of their life, it's always changing. They're growing. They're always changing too, right? And so I think they're more adaptable. But you know, as we get a little bit older, we kind of get set in our ways, and, and we do want to cling on to some kind of security. And I think when we're coming from a place of need, you know, I often reflect on this because the best relationships that I have in my life, there's no vibration of need in them. And that's true of our own selves and our vices and our addictions or attachments. It's those are the things that if there was a big storm, if there was a food shortage, if there was something that changed the way we handle money or, you know, purchase things or trade or exchange for items or whatever that is, if you're like, but I need this, but I, I need that. And we, when we're coming from a place of need, it's very unsettling. And we generally are coming from a place of fear. I think that's when relationships have really the greatest hardship. I mean, from all the years that I've been working with clients and doing my own personal work, at the core of the, the biggest disagreements, there's a need somewhere. It's, it's in there, even if you think you can't find it, some are obvious, but sometimes they're, not, they're less obvious, right? You could have somebody that was your best friend since kindergarten, but these particular energies right now are squeezing everyone. And all of a sudden a need will really squeeze to the surface in that friendship that you didn't see before. And if you can really look at it and say, what is the need in there? right? And if you can meet your own needs with the help of source, spirit, the universe, the law of attraction, you know, getting yourself more vibrationally aligned with who you are now, instead of maybe a version of yourself 10 years ago or five years ago, just because something you were, we're talking about this with you and your living situation, but just because something was good for you a year ago, 20 years ago, two days ago, we're changing so much, even if our outer eyes can't even perceive the change yet, but the feelings won't lie to us. And if we have needs squeezing to the surface, we can have some humility and say, I'm putting, pushing my needs onto another person. I'm pushing my needs onto that coffee, right? I'm pushing my needs onto X, Y, and Z. And I feel like a hallmark of wholeness is that you know that you're filled with whatever it is that you need from the inside out. There's a presence that comes from inside you that knows that whatever issues or challenges you might meet, you've, you have it within you to meet that. And when we still are acting out patterns of addictions or um, you know, things in relationships where we think we need another person to live our life in some way, and we know what that means, that can be a parent, that can be a spouse, that can be a boss, that can be a job, that can be a certain um, financial income stream, I need this and I need that. If we would pay attention to the needs in our vibrations, they're just communicating with us just an area inside us that needs a little more strengthening, like you were talking about. And I really feel when you were talking about you've worked on all these other aspects of yourself and maybe the physical aspect will be last, but there is this like fitness preparation. You know, there's like mental fitness and emotional fitness and spiritual fitness, vibrational fitness, all these things. And when you have these other areas strengthening, when you meet the one that is the most challenging for you to give up those last needs or fears or whatever those trigger points are, you've already like coming with like a full inner toolbox, right? And then you can help the part of you that you might admit to yourself and say, this is my, the area that I feel the weakest or 
um, or that I just don't feel as strong. And I've noticed that in many patterns through my life. So, but if you've strengthened these other ones consciously, incrementally by touching the door, you know, changing the way you make your coffee, these kinds of things, you know, at a certain point, you're just not drinking caffeinated coffee anymore, right? Or then maybe you don't even coffee, maybe you just want tea, or maybe you just want to drink some energetically or crystalline charged water, you know, but these are these approximations. And then change doesn't have to be so big and scary because what we're talking about, I've said this before, but I think it's important. Chosen change is a whole lot more fun than forced change, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, like you can be really proud and feel like good about an accomplishment to tackle all these things now before being forced into them for sure. Right. Um, yeah, for me, the physical is definitely the hardest. And I also was giving myself some grace during like a stressful move and a lot of upheaval in my life to say like, not yet, uh, build a foundation and you know start doing those small little habits and get some momentum going, but kind of wait for the right time. And so now the time is uh, showing up, which is good. So, um, you know, if you try to force it, it doesn't seem to work so well, you know? <laughs> no, I kind of- Put you back, so. Right? Or like we talked about, if you if you force it, you go to the gym and you just take it all on at once. It's it's just like, it's a perfect ego setup for total sabotage that you, you really aren't, creating change you're just creating like a kind of trauma for yourself and then that's going to justify why you can't make the change because you tried that before and it didn't go so well yeah. but if you and this is where mentors and coaches and healers come in because there's people who will walk across those bridges with you if you want to approximate healthy graduated um change right bridges to change that's what a good coach or a good uh you know, mentor will do. Yeah, I think someone that has been there and can embody the vibration, the blueprint, so you can just see it like, oh yeah, that's what that's like. Hmm. Um, you know, sometimes it's just, there's such healing presence with coaches and therapists and healers and whatever, because a lot of it isn't what's said. It's just that they're holding, they're holding the vibration for you. And, we try to intellectualize around it a lot, but that's mm -hmm. ultimately kind of like, sometimes you can sit there in silence and the healing happens anyways, you know? Right. Um, but there's different ways to go about it. Um, back to the whole needing thing and, and kind of getting ahead of the changes in our world, like instead of trying to hold on to like this lap of luxury life that we've been able to enjoy, I'm more of like, let's, let's go to like more of a stoic mindset of like, mm -hmm. what do we truly need? Like we need clean air, clean water, sunlight. We need uh, food, we need shelter and that's it. And we need probably, you know, community and connection and touch. And so focus on those things and see if you can let go of the rest of the stuff and be okay with that. And when any of anything above and beyond that comes into your life, it's like a joy. And I think we're learning to appreciate like everything again, because the, there's a threat that we might not get everything we want at all times, you know, like in unlimited abundance, we got to the point where we become so jaded and cynical and unappreciative of everything and comparing everything to like the, that one peak experience we had 15 years ago and every other experience since then eh, kind of pales in comparison, right? Mm. That's the perfectionist mindset, right? So so now is an invitation to say, hey, let's compare everything to like, you know, like not having enough food, not having clean water, not having like having a hole in your window blowing cold air on you. Anything above that is like, whoa, we're doing really good. This is amazing. <laughs> you know, I'm so excited. <laughs> and it's that mindset shift, right? Like shifting, mm -hmm. expecting change, expecting things to be hard, and then appreciating every second that's not. Mm -hmm. And appreciating how it's molding you and helping you as a person grow too. So, um, yeah, it's just like go go all in on this time. Like, it's an it's going to be one of the most epic times in history, and like we'll look back at it and say, "Wow, we were there for that." And not only were we there for that, but we hopefully did something uh, with it. Uh, another thing that came up when you were talking before was about 
I got this like I, this the wording of like waiting. Some people are just waiting. It's mm -hmm. like that old uh, there's an old song, "Waiting on the World to Change." Um, right. And that's kind of like the mindset of of a, a certain period of time. It's like the '90s, I think. But people born around that time, we're just gonna wait. We know the world sucks, and we're just waiting on the world to change. But like that doesn't work anymore. We can't yeah. keep waiting on the world to change. We need to like create the new world we want to see right mm -hmm. and i think now's the time like the energy of change is here you know to facilitate that like i feel it right now it's like it's here as a gift to allow us to change something that's really was really seemed unchangeable right so we don't need to be cynical or apathetic anymore here's your chance now is a chance. Everything's being shaken up, like you said. Right. And now is your chance to make this change. This is our one chance to do it. Uh, so to take advantage of it, right? And first change yourself and then help change the world. So powerful. And I think when people, you know, I think we might have touched on this in our other conversations. I certainly talk about that both in Wholesale Mastery and Wholesale School and Foundations podcasts. But language is the bridge. And when you can acquire some of this language, even just a few words here and there, it's so empowering to be able to name what you're experiencing and then name the next step that you can take to be the one who's like creating the change you want to see in yourself. And um, I was also thinking when you spoke earlier about um, the complexities and confusion of the world and um, you know, there's a lot of reasons that people want to see through those egoic lenses. I was feeling that, um, you know, there's clutter in the complexity and it's the serpent that, and that's just a metaphor, but from like the darker, more disconnected energy of this paradigm of the separation consciousness, it loves complexity and more complex systems on top of other complex systems, because that's how it can more easily hide inside those systems. But I think source or uh, you know, the higher consciousness loves the transparency and the clarity of simplicity. And so you know, I think I also noticed that when things are getting more complicated in my life, how can I make choices that are simpler? And so you know, we can do that with our decluttering and it sounds like you got pretty ruthless with yourself of like, do I need things, right? Do I, is this useful? I've also used that language. I've known this over the last you know, many years. It came to me that um, unappreciated resources are what we think of as clutter. It creates that complexity in our homes, even if we have too much stuff. But when you declutter and you clean out, and maybe you do take one room or one shelf by one shelf, right? things thin out. And there's a clarity and a quality of clarity that just comes when it's simpler, when you have less of those unwanted resources that, that become unwanted things become resources. So it's, it, it, it's the same thing, but it could be clutter or it could be a resource, right? And I think we're also in this time of this epic change and, and the shakeups that are happening. Um, if, if you allow yourself maybe to orient, just have a consciousness and have the language of looking for simplicity and being aware of where things are complicated and complicated things can be broken down into simpler things. That's what I think you do so well as a teacher and as a healer, you know, you take things, I'm sure when people are working with you and they've got all these feelings and all this stuff is going on and they can cite all these things that happened in their week that were stressful, but you just, you know, with a couple really well-placed questions, you create some clarity of like, what are they really feeling? What's really at the core of their unrest? And um, breaking down that complexity into simplicity is also part of walking our way out of the serpent's 3D matrix into the simplicity that was always meant for us, where things don't have to be complicated and hard, and we don't have to be so cluttered. It can be simple choices and simple approximations. So if we try and take on global change, we might get overwhelmed. But if we can just like you're saying and like we're talking about today is recognize that change is the new paradigm. It's the new, like this is what is building a whole new uh, age and era and timeline of uh, human consciousness. 
And, um, and we are each an integral part in that. And if we're looking way out and saying, I can't see the change I want to see, right? It's hard to see sometimes when we're looking so macro. But if you become that change, right, if you bring it to a simpler level, and you're willing to be the presence of somebody, maybe you hold the door for somebody who is trying to walk into the gym. Maybe that's how you touch the door and hold the door <laughs> and you accomplish both goals where you help somebody, but you also approximate your own goals. So- <laughs> We have a model showing you how to do it that you can follow in too. <laughs> right, exactly, right? So I think these are things to just allow ourselves. I allow myself a lot of these inner conversations. I don't, if, if something needs to be said to myself, I get a lot of healing out of la languaging something. I'm sure someone along the way said, if you can name it, you can claim it, right? And I think if you name it and claim it, you can release it. But if it's nebulous and it just feels like all the spooky energy out here or all the stressful energy that's just on my shoulders and I'm carrying around all these bags of rocks on my back and all this emotions that I haven't dealt with, everything is figure outable, right? Everything is transmutable. Everything is releasable. We just have to remember that in these times. And there's not one of us on the planet that doesn't have an inner template that was God given that has all the skills we need to start digging our way out of that, releasing our way out about of that, languaging our way out, or finding a mentor and a coach to, you know, support our way out of that. Um, and so I think this these are all hallmark energies of this Independence Day that we celebrate in the U.S. But I think a more global Independence Day has been happening. I felt it the last few years. It's not just for the United States that we celebrate, and you know, July Fourth Independence Day. I think it's been a template and a model um, for a global Independence Day, and in the transmission that's going to release or that just released today, actually, it's they're really talking about intergalactic independence, like cosmic independence and emancipation, really like a divine and sovereign independence day. Um, so we're freeing ourselves on a whole lot of levels. But if we just keep swimming in the deep end of a cold pool, because we just kind of fell into it, that's when people can get really overwhelmed. And then you and I are here to remind you to just break it down into smaller steps, right? Find somebody who can help you walk through these things. And if you need someone to, su to support you and you don't have that, you can certainly contact me through my website at FrequencyWriter.com or my email, FrequencyWriter at gmail.com. And Matthew, what's your website? Uh, people can find me at HabitualHealth.com habitualhealth.com and that's Matthew Crowfoot and this is what we do I mean we both do it in different ways and but um, we both look for the same things of people coming in with big issues and breaking them down into smaller bite-sized steps or understandings or words or language that they can use to create the movement that people really want yeah so I think these are, all, I mean, I think we're actually seeding July right now. I mean, July is already seeding us that we know these energies are coming. But again, if we embrace them, if people embrace this conversation to say, well, if change is the underlying energy of 2022, and I know that July is going to seed even more invitations towards independence, emancipation, freedom, li liberation, sovereignty, right? Well, then what can I do this month to be walking myself into an experience where I let that in my life more, more consciously? I open the door for sovereignty to come in, right? The words that just came to me were choose your change. Choose your change. I like it, right? Yeah, it's very empowering. It's very empowering when you're the one making the choice to do those things right? And to em embody those new aspects or try on that new way of eating or whatever it may be. Um, so I think this is pretty cool. I think we talked about some good stuff. I feel, I even feel more balanced, just there's a serenity that happens when you're in this deeper alignment with yourself, even in the willingness to be more aligned, there's something that's very peaceful and we can rest in our soul presence which is where we step outside of time where all the pressures are anyway right yeah Absolutely. yeah thank Thanks. you so much for having me on the call it's a uh, great chat as always i appreciate it always always and we'll have to do it again because i just love what 
the synergy between us, um, you know, what we're both able to channel through our instruments. I learned from these conversations just being in them. So, and I hope our listeners do too. So you can find Matthew at his website. I'll be sure to put down his uh, website details and contact information below this video. And you can find me at Color the Magic on YouTube and Whole Soul Mastery on a variety of other social media platforms. And we wish you a lot of blessings in July, 2022 and the remainder of this year. And we'll be back again with more heart-inspired conversations. We'll see you guys soon.